Hello everyone. In their recent interview, Yuval Harari and Lex Friedman talk about the dangers of not understanding how AI works. So in this video, I wanted to address these concerns and demonstrate how we can develop AI tools that actually expose their inner process and reveal to us uh, how they generate ideas and content so that we can have a better understanding of uh, where the content is coming from and how we can also work with it. I will use in this demonstration the Intranodus Text Network Visualization Tool that is actually made uh, in a way that reveals all the inner processes and then connects uh, the uh, structural insights about the text that it discovers to GPT-3, GPT-4 models and generates ideas but always showing you how it actually does it so that at any moment of time you can look inside and see how the ideas are produced. And I think this addresses the concern that they voiced in their interview because basically what they're saying uh, or what Yuval Harari is saying is that when you don't understand how stories or content uh, are actually made, this is very dangerous because human beings live by stories and when we're told stories that are synthetic in nature and we don't understand how this synthesis occurred, it's very dangerous because uh, it might come up with misinformation, it might come up with ideas that have some hidden agenda that we don't understand. So I think these are valid concerns and this is why from the very beginning I made Infranodus in a way that reveals its inner workings. Uh, it's a little bit like you would look at a device like a computer for example and it would have a transparent box so you can see how it's made. You can understand how it works. It's open source in the way that it, it actually reveals all its logic and I'm going to show you how it does that. So here I have a visualization of a text, it's a research paper on meditation and the first thing that Infranodus always does is that it shows you visually a representation of the text that it's working with. So you can see what are the main ideas in the understanding of Infranodus. Uh, so for example here it's craving and brain and mindfulness, how these ideas relate to each other, what are the topical clusters it forms, so what are the main topics that can be found inside and then it uses uh, GPT-3 to generate the names for this topic, so you can clearly see that this text is about drug reacti reactivity, mindfulness training, meditation, imaging, brain structure, and so on. So it's a research paper on the connection between craving, meditation, and uh, neuroscience. And already this visual representation shows us how any machine would actually see uh, the text that it would be working with it first tries to understand what are the main topics inside and then based on that it's going to produce content. So for example when you then go into the AI module in Infranodus which connects it to uh, GPT-3 and GPT-4 it actually always tells you what it's going to do. So for example here it says okay I'm going to look at the structural gap between the two topics in this case prefrontal cortex and substance abuse so I can also highlight this gap here so you can see how it looks as you can see we have a text structure and you have these two topics but they're not so well related so this is the logic that Infranodus uses to generate content and ideas and it reveals this logic to you so you can understand how it works and not only have a better idea of where the content is coming from but that you can also apply this logic yourself like you don't actually need to use the AI in this case to generate new content and ideas you can just look at these two uh, clusters and ask yourself what can be the relationship bit between prefrontal cortex and substance abuse. Maybe there is something in the brain structure that makes people uh, more exposed to the possibility of substance abuse. Is there research on that? How I can think in this direction? So already it reveals to you uh, like an approach, a framework of thinking that you can use without the AI. But if you want you can use the AI uh, but the AI here is always going to tell you uh, how it's making its prompt. So here it says, okay, I'm going to look at the structural gap or at the blind spot between these two topics and I'm going to try to connect them. In which way do you want me to connect them, it asks you. So it can generate a question, it can develop the idea, it can uh, do chat GPT like chat with this uh, concept, it can challenge this idea, make an assertion or create some kind of innovative idea. So for example, if I ask it, okay, generate a question, uh, then it's going to take these two topics and it's going to try to make a question that would connect these two ideas and it's telling me that, it shows to me that these are the questions uh, that are generated by the AI to bridge this specific gap. So if you want you can also sh uh, show another gap and then use a different gap to generate more ideas. So for example if I click here it's going to be 
generating uh, a new question between emotional control and neuroscience research. Is there any connection between our emotions and the way that the neurons connect in our brain? But as I said, it always reveals to you the uh, inner workings of the model, how it approaches the content, uh, what does it do to generate new ideas, so that as a human being, you don't deal anymore with the black box of just like dumping your text into um, um, an AI tool and then just getting something out of it, but you always see what you're working with. And moreover, this graph representation, in fact, it allows you to also kind of like deal with the content in a very tangible way because you can expose it and then you can uh, zoom in onto some topics that you find interesting. So for example, here I can zoom in onto cortex prefrontal insula, and then I can see in which context uh, these ideas are used. And then if I want, I can summarize this selected statement. So there again, Infranodis is showing me how it's producing content. I say to it, okay, select every statement, every paragraph that contains those ideas. And then let's summarize only those paragraphs. So I see exactly what's happening here. I know uh, the basis for this content. It's going to be this particular paper, and all the statements and paragraphs that talk about uh, cortex, insula, and prefrontal. And then it generates a text, uh, but I know what it's based on. So it's not anymore any sort of black box idea, right? And then if I like this, um, I can save it to notes for, for future research, for example. So I can save it here, right? Then I can deselect these ideas. And then another approach, like normally if you're prompting it, you would maybe think, okay, I know that this paper is about craving and mindfulness in the brain, uh, but give me something a bit more insightful and something more interesting. But then you don't know what, what the AI tool would actually do to produce this sort of content. Uh, but what you can do in Infranodus is to select some ideas that you don't like to see anymore, that maybe seem too obvious to you or that you already understand. Then you can hide them from the graph. It reveals to you visually uh, what exists underneath. You can even give names to the topics that emerged. And for example, you see like, okay, there is a lot on mindfulness training. Let's zoom into this topic. Let's select it, zoom in, and then for instance, uh, use the built-in AI module to then generate some content in relation to this particular subject, right? So then I can go and say like, okay, let's develop this idea further. So I can do a uh, chat GPT like style uh, of developing this idea. And then uh, it will generate something uh, which is synthetic in nature because now it just uses the keywords from this topic, but I know where it's coming from. I know that I purposefully selected this particular aspect of this discourse and I asked it to generate some content. So this is why in general graph visualization can be very helpful for you know, making us understand uh, how certain ideas are generated. And I think it's a it's kind of like a more complicated approach because it's not just like one click and you have a solution. So you have to invest some time into understanding how this text representation and visualization works. But on the other hand, you have the advantage of now using the AI in a way that is much more conscious of what is happening. Like you understand where it's getting this content from. You understand what it's paying attention to. If you create, for example, um, a summary, you know that it's going to generate summary based on these topics. If you go into gap insights and you ask it to generate new idea, you know how it does it. It explains everything to you. It shows that I'm looking at the gaps in your text, I'm looking at the ideas that could be better connected, and I'm going to try to connect them in new ways. And I'm going to generate something, I'm going to make something up, but this is, at least it's explicit, it's transparent, so I see what's happening. And I think it's one of the ways to solve this problem that Lex Friedman and Yuval Harari addressed in their interview of uh, the AI systems being opaque and uh, not revealing you know, how they work, that we don't understand them. I think this is one of the ways how we can make sure that we understand them. And it's kind of like doing software in the open source way, but here we're not only revealing the code, but we're also revealing the logic that underpins it in a way that is clear not only to the programmers but also to everyday users who don't want to get into the code, right? Because not all of us can understand how, how it's written. So I think it's also important to use visual tools to describe the logic, to expose this logic, 
of course, then you reveal it and maybe some other people will use it, okay, but then at the same time, you're also addressing this problem of black box and uh, making it easier to understand how, how something works. So if you're interested to learn more about this particular uh, tool, try it out on infranodos.com. Also subscribe to this channel so you can get informed about new videos where I make demonstrations about the different frameworks and approaches you can have with this methodology. And please also leave your comment or questions uh, in the comments below if you have any and I will be happy to answer. Thank you.